Ere I saw a dappled wonder settling across the fields, hovering on angel wings, brandishing a blazing shield. Where do they go? The ones that run away and never return. There is nothing here but suffering. is wanted for the murder of a child. Man lost my mom. Then me. Ain't no way he ever given up on finding me. There's anger in you. It'll fuel you, yes, but... What's the worst kind of fuel? The worst kind. Savagery a man is capable of. When he believes his cause to be just. You came all this way on the railroad? Yeah. I left behind all those people. Hello and welcome to this What Do You Want to Watch Emmy special pilot review of the Outstanding Limited Series. The Outstanding Limited Anthology Series nominee, The Underground Railroad. I'm your I'm your host, Ashley Hopley. Joining me today, Dylan Bliant. Uh, happy to be here to talk about Barry Jenkins' latest show about um, shit that's fucked. There you. <laughs> All right. Please be aware <laughs> we'll be freely discussing anything and everything about the plot themes and ending of the first episode of Underground Railroad. So if you haven't watched it, come back later. It's available on Amazon Prime. Uh, so let's jump into a discussion of Underground Railroad Chapter 1, Georgia. Uh, created by Barry Jenkins, based on the Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Released May 14th, 2021, on Amazon Prime Video, directed by Barry Jenkins, teleplay by Barry Jenkins, starring Thuso Mbidu, uh, Chase W. Dillon, Joel Edgerton, Aaron Pierce, and Benjamin Walker. When Caesar convinces Cora to escape from Randall Plantation in Georgia, their lives are irrevocably, irrevocably changed. They discover the impossible in an underground railroad, uh, which takes them on an unexpected journey and re- reveals the true face of America. Uh, Dylan, what did you know about the Underground Railroad before this, and what did you think? I knew it was a show. That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew Barry Jenkins did it. Uh, other than that, I didn't know anything. Um, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed this. I thought that I, I, again, I'll just put it out there straight away. I, I would like to go back and finish this off. I really enjoyed it. I mean, also, I've watched... I think I've watched every other Barry Jenkins. Well, at least the, the one since he's started. Since I don't know. What's, what's he done? I mean, I've watched Moonlight, Bill Streak and Store. What else has he done? What have I missed? I don't know. So I just continue my Barry Jenkins filmography. So I've got to finish this, I think, technically. Uh, Pilot was really good. I feel like it has a very sort of confusing slow start is my one negative where I was unable to fully grasp or gravitate towards any of the characters for that first maybe 15, 20 minutes. I wasn't sure who actually was the lead and who I was supposed to be focusing my attention on or or anything like that. I think once they sort of settled down and I got an idea of who, what, where, when, why, then I got a bit more invested into the show. And I also, my interest peaked a lot more once I realized the show was actually a lot more fictional than trying to be factual because that was the other thing I didn't realize. Like I knew it was called Underground Railroad, but for some reason I just... My brain never like thought too much about the name until the part where they actually start going to a literal underground railroad. And I was like, oh, right. Okay. So this is like full sort of not so, trying to be like super serious. Like this actually yeah, happened. It's full or whatever. historical it's, fiction. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a bit more fun and that's a lot more intriguing because obviously in the last sort of 10 years, we've had a lot of super, you know, factual, serious stories not saying that it's wrong to do more of those as long as they're they're good but obviously this is a a a it factor i guess about this that helps it stand out to be a little bit different um it still hits the mark of just fucked up racist shit that's hard to watch um even joel edgerton saying the n-word i found quite i don't know why maybe it's just him because it's not it wasn't even like a white dude says m-word so that's bad like you know you see that happen in movies set around this period or whatever else or i don't know you watch any quentin tarantino movie um but then also 
it's just I don't know that scene where he's like sitting down after he brings back the escaped um the escaped one the escaped slave I guess or yep. yeah it brings him back the the big one who they then like burn alive later and whatever else um which was fucked up but like just him sitting in that room and he's like I am the you know the M word this the escape the the special breed of M word not you know like all that sort of stuff just the way he, like Joel Edgerton's like delivering those lines and stuff I was like oh you're a bad guy <laughs> like I really it, it, instantly you kind of like oh I don't I don't like you at all and then yeah I mean I'll say you don't like the plantation owner or whatever either because he just yeah the fact that they literally have the whole group of white people just sitting out on that table and. They have him whipped in the background and later they have all the other slaves come in just to watch him get burnt alive. Like that was obviously fucked up to watch. But yeah, um, really good acting. Um, it's quite shot quite well. Um, and other than, as I said, that first 15, 20 minutes where I was like sort of disconnected and be like, well, it was, what's actually going on? Um, I really liked it and I was a lot more keen by the time we got to the end. I was like, oh, we can have a lot of fun with this show. Well, I mean. It's fucking serious <laughs> show, like thematically, but I was like, oh, there's some interesting like directions this can go, given that it's got this whole very fictional take on what's happening now. And I don't mean like fantasy land, obviously, but a, tri- a railroad underground is very fant- <laughs> fantasy for this sort of genre. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I really appreciate it and like, I thought it was really good as well. Um, it is like a rough show to get into. Uh, Again, it's like pretty depressing and you know hard hitting. Like just the like you said, the juxtaposition of the white people plantation owners like eating dinner as this black man is getting whipped, uh, and then literally dancing as another as they set him on fire. And uh, he he literally has that whole thing of like, there's that one person that complains. He's like, he like says to him, he's like, well, the M words aren't. Real people. They're not like us. They're not real people. Like they don't and love like. and think. They're and, animals. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. All the, like it's just the yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you know, all the you know, it's got to be rough to act as those plantation people. Like it's not, it's oh, a hard gig. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was very amusing that the plantate one of the plantation owners just dies in the middle of the road. Yeah, that was quite just, funny though. That was, it was kind of amusing. After you know he he has made fun of uh, one of his slaves dying <laughs> and not knowing. And brain. Yeah. yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, I really, I've watched the second episode as well. Uh, so I think I've seen a little bit more and it definitely leans more into that fictional element. Uh, and I'd be interested to see where the rest of the season leads. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely keen. I think that there's really good chemistry between, uh, who was it? Aaron Pia and Thuso Midu, the two. I guess leads, uh, like you said, there's like in weird imagery at the start, like of someone being born, uh, and that kind of stuff. That's kind of, I feel like will make more sense once you watch more of the season. Um, but yeah, I think, I think there's definitely enough there to make things interesting. Uh, yeah, they, they put in a lot of different building blocks and that kind of stuff, but yeah, it is a brutal opening. Uh, the other thing is, I think it is very Dark lighting wise, like some of the stuff set at night was very difficult to watch, like on my TV screen. I don't know if you had similar issues. Um, with a 4K television set, I did not have these issues. I, I don't know what that means. With your piece of shit $500 TV, I'm not surprised. I mean, it was very similar to how difficult it was to watch that episode of Game of Thrones. You know? <sighs> <laughs> you know, and just broadcasting it over the internet, it's like really difficult. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah so uh yeah i guess please be aware of that and uh you know let us know what you thought of the underground railroad should we keep watching it do you love it what do you what other things would you recommend after we watch the underground railroad let us know on twitter at explosion.com slash twitter or jump to a discord at explosion.com slash discord uh if you want to help us out leave us a review on apple Podcasts or on podchaser or tell people about what you want to watch uh, and if you like this episode and tell us with a dollar, head on over to our coffee page at explosions.com slash support. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, keep watching stuff, I guess.